One of the great monologues in literature is delivered by Captain Ahab in Herman Melville's Moby Dick. In it, we hear the essence of Ahab's philosophy, one in which many of us hold often without knowing it. Captain Ahab has declared to his crew of whale hunters that he seeks but one whale on the sea, the whale who took his leg, the white whale, Moby Dick. Ahab promises to the crew a large reward of gold to any man who spots the white whale. Skin your eyes for him, men, he says. Look sharp for white water. If ye see but a bubble, sing out. First mate Starbuck protests. Vengeance, son of dumb brute, cried Starbuck. That simply smote thee from blindest instinct? Madness! To be enraged with a dumb thing, Captain Ahab, seems blasphemous. To which Captain Ahab, in his monologue, responds. All visible objects, man, are but as pasteboard masks. But in each event, in the living act, the undoubted deed, there, some unknown but still reasoning thing, puts forth the moldings of its features from behind the unreasoning mask. If man will strike, strike through the mask, how can the prisoner reach outside except by thrusting through the wall? To me, the white whale is that wall shoved near to me. Sometimes I think there's not beyond, but tis enough. He tasks me. He heaps me. I see in him outrageous strength with an unscrutable malice sinnowing it. That inscrutable thing is chiefly what I hate. And be the white whale agent or be the white whale principal, I will wreak that hate upon him. Talk not to me of blasphemy, man. I'd strike the sun if it insulted me. For could the sun do that, then could I do the other. Since there is ever a sort of fair play here and jealousy providing over all creations. But not my master, man, is even that fair play. Who's over me? Truth hath no confines. Take off thine eye. More intolerable than fiends' glarings is a doltish stare. So, so, thou redness and palest, my heat has melted thee to anger glow. But look ye, Starbuck, what is said in heat, that thing unsays itself. There are men from whom warm words are small indignity. I meant not to incense thee. Let it go. Look, see yonder Turkish cheeks of spotted tawn, living, breathing pictures painted by the sun, the pagan leopards, the unwrecking and unworshipping things that live and seek and give no reasons for the torrid life they feel. The crew, man, the crew, are they not one and all with Ahab in this matter of the whale? See Stubb, he laughs. See yonder Chilean, he snorts to think of it. Stand up amid the general hurricane. Thy one tossed sapling cannot, Starbuck. And what is it? Reckon it. Tis but to help strike a fin. No wondrous feat for Starbuck. What is it more? From this one poor hunt, then the best lance out of all Nantucket. Surely he will not hang back when every foremast hand has clutched a whetstone. Ah! Constraining sees thee. I see. The billow lifts thee. Speak, but speak. Ay, ay, thy silence, then that voice is thee. Something shot from my dilated nostrils. He has inhaled it in his lungs. Starbuck now is mine. Cannot oppose me now without rebellion. A monologue worthy of rereading and rereading. Note the line, 
all visible objects, man are but as pasteboard masks. And he goes on to say, if man will strike, strike through the mask. So what is a mask? A mask is something you put on over your face that hides the thing beneath it, that hides what's behind the mask. He looks at dumb beasts, as Starbuck calls it, and sees living, reasoning thing behind the mask. The mask is just hiding the reason that integrates all of nature beyond the mask. And so he wants to strike through that wall, strike through that mask. He thinks there is something of reason, maybe it be God or gods, but some force of reasoning behind the mask, of morality, of the ability to make moral judgments. In other words, the whale that took Ahab's leg did it by some divine power, and I will wreak that hate upon him. Talk not to me of blasphemy, man. I'd strike the sun if it insulted me, for could the sun do that, then could I do the other. Later, he says, who's over me? Truth hath no confines. In other words, Beyond the utmost bound of truth, there is no bound of truth. We just haven't been able to strike through the mask. And that is what I, Ahab, will do. I will reach the realm of the gods. I will reach the realm of ultimate truth and strike through this whale, which represents that and everything to me, Captain Ahab. Now, this speech can be broken up into two sections. The first section is revealing of Ahab's deeper belief in philosophy that beyond this dumb brute, deep beyond even the sun and inanimate objects, there is some kind of unifying reasoning force, but it's hidden behind a mask, behind a wall, behind a sheet, a curtain, however you want to think of it. And he will strike through to see, to look and to damage what is on. He wants to harm what is on the other side because he has hate in his heart. And the second half of this speech, when he talks to Starbuck about the reddening and palest, my heat has melted thee to anger. But look ye, Starbuck, what is said in heat, that thing unsays itself. There are men from whom warm words are small in dignity. I meant not to incense thee. This begins a topic, the part of his speech, where he is attempting to persuade Starbuck to keep the men on his side. And he tells Starbuck to stand up amid the general hurricane. Thy one tossed sapling cannot. You cannot stand amidst the hurricane, he says. Reckon it. The men are with me. See Stubb, he laughs. See yonder Chilean seaman, he laughs. He snorts to think of it. He's ready. These men are with me. Constraining sees thee. I see the billow lifts thee. Speak if you wish. But remember, the men are with me. And the men are like the whetstone. They are the men that are sharpening the sword so that I can go out and stabbeth at the beast. So in this very short monologue, spoken early on in the book Moby Dick, we get a whole sense of this man Ahab. What's motivating? What's drawing him on this quest, this monomaniacal quest to destroy this white whale, this fish in the sea? And this is what spirals everything into this ship, into these men's lives that hurdles them across the sea and to their destiny. <laughs> 